Is lightning just a huge capacitor discharging in the sky? Let's break into it. So let's talk about a couple of things. So the first thing is that we have these two fields of study within electricity. One of them is called electrostatics and it talks about static conditions. And the other one is electrodynamics and it talks about movement. So with electrostatics, we're talking about charges at rest in any kind of fields or forces that exist between those charges. And it's governed by Coulomb's law. So Coulomb's law deals with attraction and repulsion of charged particles and as well as like, you know, fields that exist as a result of that. Whereas electrodynamics talks about the movement of electric charge. And we talk about movement, largely we're talking about continual movement over time. So in a circuit, we have constant current that is flowing and it's consistent, it's engineered, it's very specific level. And that is governed by Ohm's law. So Ohm's law, uh, if we're taking electromagnetism and we're applying an EMF to a circuit, how is it going to act certain voltage, current, all of that kind of stuff. So there are two different schools of thought that actually do mingle together to create kind of our current understanding of electricity, but they are a little bit different. So when we're dealing with a circuit, we're dealing with electrodynamics, right? We, we have current that's flowing consistently through a circuit, but we still do have a buildup of charge. We have what's called a difference of potential, and that's usually what we call voltage. Um, difference of potential inside of a battery means that we have a side of this battery that is a little bit more giving of electrons and a little bit uh, one side that's more receiving of electrons. So because of this difference of potential, we just hook wires up to this thing and extend them out. But that also means that the entire circuit now has a side that is more negative on one side and more positive on the other. In AC, it's gonna be switching back and forth 60 times a second, but like for the DC, we can look at this. What's actually happening though, is we're creating an electric field all the way across this entire circuit so that the field itself exists between these oppositely charged objects. So in the conductor, right? Say this is one battery terminal here and this is another battery terminal here. And this is like a, a 700 foot long conductor that has a resistor in the middle of it somewhere. What we do is we just have a buildup of charge on each side of this, which is what creates a electric field across the entire conductor. Now with electrostatics, when we're looking at a capacitor, it's a little bit different because there's not actually a conductor that like flows through the middle of a capacitor. We have something called displacement current. And it just means that current that's flowing and building up charge on one plate is influencing through air or through some kind of dielectric medium, the charges on the other side to move. It's similar to how like in a transformer, we have one side of, you know, one coil, one side of the other coil, nothing's touching between the two. We just have a magnetic field that's expanding and collapsing and it allows the effects of current moving on this side to make the current on the other side start moving. It's the exact same phenomenon. It's just that a capacitor uses an electric field as its, its big use case, whereas an inductor in a transformer uses magnetic fields to do a very similar kind of thing. So understanding that when we have clouds and we have lightning, what's going on is that there's this thing called breakdown voltage, right? We have this huge dielectric in between. It's just air between the, the, the clouds and earth. On earth, earth is generally considered negative when we're talking about it for like grounding and bonding. But in the terms of a thundercloud, it actually ends up being less negative than the cloud is itself. The bottom of a cloud starts to accumulate an excess of negative charge that looks largely more negative than the earth. So we can think of the earth as actually kind of changing to this positive charge relative to the cloud. So a whole bunch of positive charge builds up kind of in the upper part of the cloud, a whole bunch of negative charge builds up on the bottom of the cloud. And now we have this huge difference of potential between the cloud and earth. So what happens is when this voltage, when this difference of potential gets to a certain point, what we call a breakdown voltage, it will allow a discharge all the way through it to get to the ground. With a capacitor, we have the same thing. We have a dielectric inside, but the dielectric's a little bit different. So a dielectric really just means an insulator that has molecules that are allowed to be polarized. So it's a insulator that can still act in really cool ways to allow certain things to happen, not just any old regular insulator. So we have a different kind of dielectric though. We don't just have air in here or else capacitors would have a bolt that go through them. With air though, we don't have this like solid material insulator thing. Air kind of acts like an insulator most of the time, but during a situation like this, we can raise the voltage, the difference of potential between earth and the bottom of this cloud so much 
that it actually breaks down the dielectric and it creates a pathway through to the ground. And you can think of this the same way that you think of like the boots that you wear as electricians. Like right now I'm wearing electrically insulated boots. So there's a dielectric strength to the bottom side of my boots that will not allow current to flow through the rubber of that boot. But if you raise the voltage enough and you create a situation where the amount of voltage is greater than the strength of the dielectric, you can actually get current to flow through my boots and blow out the bottom of my boots. So it's all about the voltage level, right? Now, what's interesting too is that water helps a lot. So when you have moist air, which is why a lot of, you know, thunderclouds and all that stuff happens when it's raining, you actually lower the amount of breakdown voltage that's necessary to be able to break down that dielectric and get through. So that's why it's working, but there's not actually current flowing through. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about that. I said inductors have this thing where they're not touching, but something going, you know, charges flowing back and forth and back and forth create this expanding magnetic field around this inductor. Well, this is just another inductor. And if I can, move charges to make magnetism, I can use moving magnetism to make charge flow. That's how inductors work. But the same phenomenon happens with capacitors. But rather than the magnetic field expanding and collapsing to make the other inductor move, with a capacitor we have one plate here and one plate here. And so when we have charges that's flowing back and forth, we're developing a whole bunch of charge on one side. Every time these charges move back and forth, well, when we create a whole bunch of charge on one side, we have the opposite charges on the other side that are influenced by that through air like this. So if we build up a whole bunch of charges on one side, we're gonna build up a whole bunch of opposite charge on the other side. And every time we have this time varying movement of charge, it's allowing a buildup of charge, a release of charge, buildup of charge, release of charge. So it's really just like through air the movement of charge on this side is influencing there to be a movement of charge on the other side. And that's how capacitors work. It's very, very similar phenomenon, but it just goes to show that the only reason that capacitors don't have a bolt flowing through them and lightning discharging is because it's a specific kind of dielectric that's really, really strong. So it just builds the strength of that capacitor more than it does allow any kind of breakdown voltage to get through. And it's similar if you think of like most of these inductors inside of a transformer, we put this huge piece of iron on the inside to strengthen the magnetic field. It just makes it a better inductor. Well, the same thing with a capacitor. If we put a really crappy dielectric in here, it's not gonna really help the capacitor do its job. So if we put a really great dielectric in there, it actually helps the overall capacitance. So capacitors and inductors, you can really think of them like the same thing. You just gotta understand that you know, uh, capacitors have an electric field that you're working with and inductors have a magnetic field that you're dealing with.